99% of the parents, families, and kids that come into this playroom are amazing, but we're not talking about those families today. Every so often we get a parent, a kid, or a family that comes in here who are just the worst. And these are their stories. Dun -dun. You and I till the end. I thought it'd be kind of fun to share with you guys some of the worst people to ever come in to my playroom. Again, 99% of the people who come here are incredible. They are the reason that I am still open. And I'm so incredibly grateful for the community that supports me. But sometimes we get some interesting folks in here. I'm gonna share those stories. These are all lighthearted and it is not going to be attacking anyone specifically. I just get asked, all the time to share these stories. So I compiled a few to share with you. AJ and Charlie are here. So if you see them moseying around in the background, those are my kids. That's okay. So the first one I actually made a TikTok about, it was during a birthday party. I have a rule here in the playroom that there's no food or drink allowed on this carpeted area. I do have a cafe area over there and I have a party room in the back. So you can eat, drink, hang out in those spaces. The cafe area actually has a wonderful view of the playroom. So that is a great spot for parents to eat and drink if they need to keep an eye out on their kids. However, this one woman, I had to remind multiple times that she could not have food or drink on the carpet. So the first time I came up to her and I very politely just said, just so you know, we don't allow any beverages on the carpet. That does include water. And she said, oh, I'm so sorry. And moved over to the cafe area. Now, the reason that we don't even allow water is these are carpet tiles. So say water spilt on it and the water got underneath it. Sitting water is not good. It could create mold. It could be very, very hazardous um, in the long run. So just no food, no drink, no water, nothing. I also find that if rules are black and white, nobody has any questions. So if I allowed the water, then what about with a little bit of lemon? Or what about with a little bit of Mio? Or what about this? What about that? No, nothing. No food, no water. Let's get back to the story. So then I look over and like five minutes later, she's back out here drinking her water. So I said, ma'am, I'm so sorry. We cannot have any food and drink in the playroom area. Can you please keep it in the party room or in the cafe? And I could tell she's getting a little annoyed. And she said, okay. And we moved on. I noticed five minutes later, she was back out here with her water guys. And I'm like, this lady, it's driving me nuts. So I said, ma'am, you cannot have food or drink out on the carpeted area. Can you please move it? And she got so mad at me, looked me in the eye and goes, I get it. Okay, if you get it, and if you know the rule, then why do you continue to break it? I am a small business owner. I'm not making rules just because I feel like telling people what to do. I make rules because I wanna keep the playroom safe and healthy for all people. So that was just a reaction I did not expect. I don't normally get yelled at guys. So that one was like beyond. So I said, okay, I'm going to ask you to follow the rules or leave. Let's just say she followed the rules after that point. I mean, it's just, it's crazy to me that somebody would have to ask you multiple times. It's just insanity. So let me know down in the comments, who do you agree with? Should I have let her continue to drink her water on the carpet? Or do you agree with me and asking her to please not? Okay, so the next one has to do with our baby area. Our baby area is 24 months or younger only, which means the day you turn two, you're out of there. And the reason is, is a lot of the toys in there are like bouncers and exosaucers and things like that, that just can't hold the weight of bigger kids. We also had a slide in there that ended up getting broken and they're just harder on those toys. If you guys follow me on TikTok or Instagram, I have a series of what did they break now? And I share the toys that they break. Now, I don't normally share the toys in the baby area because we don't have a lot of big kids in there because I try to preserve those toys for the babies. I also do not allow older kids in there because if you do have teeny tiny little ones in there, sometimes they don't have neck control. A lot of times they can't walk or they're just crying crawling and bigger kids like this play a little bit rougher and it's just not it's just not safe so I'm very very strict about that area some people would say too strict but some people also thank me for my strictness they have such a small space and this area is so 
so large that it really shouldn't be an issue until people make it an issue. So I had somebody come in and I informed them that their child could not go in the baby area. Just kind of like a, hi, welcome to grandma's playroom. Please make sure that all food and drinks stay on the tiled area. How old is your little? And then they said, oh, today's their second birthday. And I was like, wonderful. So that means that they graduated out of the baby area. So they just are not allowed in that baby area, but they can enjoy the rest of the playroom. And then I said, have fun, go on in. So she knew. She even said, oh, okay, no baby area, got it. She responded back, I just hit you in the cheek, I'm so sorry. A few moments later, her child was in the baby area. And I said, ma'am, I'm so sorry, but your child cannot be in there. She goes, well, she's already in there. I see, that's why we're having this conversation. And she goes, so what, I have to remove her? It's her birthday. Yes, that's why you have to remove her. So she takes she takes the child out, the child starts screaming. Because I get it, you let your child do something and then you had to remove your child because they weren't allowed to do it. So it's very difficult for that child to understand. And if the child just had never gone in there, it wouldn't have been an issue. But the fact that they got to go in there and then had to be removed made it an issue. So the woman looks at me and she goes, she said you can't be in there. <laughs> which technically I did. But to put the blame on me, to make me the bad person when I informed you beforehand, I was just like shocked. It's just, I get blamed a lot for a lot of stuff in here. Like, oh, if, if Sierra sees you do that, she's gonna kick you out. Or Sierra said you can't do that. And I get it, it's fine. It's easy to have a scapegoat. But like, this was like beyond. So now I wanna hear your guys' comments. What do you think? What do you think of the baby area? Should I be so strict on it? Should I be more relaxed? Would you agree with the mom or would you agree with me? And just remember guys, there's no right or wrong answer here. I'm just a small business owner trying to figure out what's right for my business, trying to keep everybody safe and trying to keep all the toys from breaking. <laughs> so there's toys for everybody, right Charles McFarles? Yes, I love you. Did you just lick me? And now this is going to be our final story for the day. I have a fire code capacity here in the playroom, which means once a certain amount of people have entered the playroom, I cannot let anybody else come in. And that is based off square footage, how many exits. Basically, I don't make those rules, the police department does. And if I were to break those rules, it could have horrible ramifications. That could be very, very dangerous. Or the fire marshal could come in and give me a ticket. Lots of different things could happen if I broke fire code. So I'm very strict on it. So it was a rainy day out in St. Louis, which means that we were busy in here. And I had to put the sign up that said currently at capacity. And I had a woman come in with, I believe, four children, which is a lot of kids when your capacity is 20. So that's like one fifth of my capacity. Love it. Love to see it. We should probably call ahead to make sure we have space. So she comes in and I inform her that unfortunately we're at capacity. I do not have any more space, but we should have some in maybe 30 to 45 minutes. This was not the answer she wanted. Oh my goodness. I get it. I have two kids. Taking them in and out of the car seat is very, very difficult. Trust me, I get it. Four makes it twice as hard. I feel for you. And as a small business owner, nothing makes me more sad than turning people away. As sad as you think you are, I'm even more sad. All I want is to have a business that people want to go to. And all I wanna do is have business. So turning people away is not what I wanna do. But fire code is fire code. So, so she starts yelling at me saying, I got them all the way out of the car. Do you know how difficult this is? I can't believe it. Last time we were here, you said reservations weren't required. And I said, I am so, so sorry. You are correct. Reservations are not required. We do accept walk-ins until we're at capacity. And then at that point, I can't allow anybody else in. I always suggest, and it's even listed on my website though, that if you want to guarantee a spot when you arrive, just give us a call and I will do everything in my power to make sure that there is a spot when you arrive. 90% of people call on radio days to make sure that we can get them a spot because some people do drive really far some people do have a lot of kiddos and they want to make sure they get in just like the movie theater if you go to the movie theater to buy tickets to a movie and it's sold out it's not a personal attack it's just there's no more space so this just did not go well she was just yelling and I 
felt very uncomfortable because it was right when I first opened and I really didn't know how to deal with confrontation and it was just a lot. So then she informed me that she is never ever coming back here again. And I never understand like why that's a threat because if you're yelling at me, I don't want you to come back again. Something I've learned after owning a business is that not all business is good business. Sometimes your mental health is worth saying no. So if somebody's screaming at me, I definitely do not need them to come back. All right, you guys, those are three customers and families that were just a little bit extra. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think that I am too strict? Do you think they were in the wrong? Give it to me. I can take it. Right, Char Char? If you liked these story times, sit down and chat with me. I'd like it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, I'd love it if you would subscribe. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And don't forget, wash your hands, wash your hands. Bye guys. You